don't tell me your limitation is that your parents went to be with the Lord I sympathize with you but God is still looking for people in this season hear me I assure you by God every great man you celebrate today is only a sample of what is to come when he sends a word to Jacob his intention is that the entire Israel be enlightened by that word. Let me materially, financially. There are many people who are trusting God for grace to be the Josephs of their time. To be the financial apostles that God will commit the wealth of nations. There are people who are trusting God to bring levels of the prophetic that we have not seen in modern history. Hear me, beloved? Having all the dreams and the visions are wonderful, but there is a demand. The first revelation is that being used by God is more than a gift. It is a reward for paying a certain kind of price. The narrative that God just uses whoever he will use, it doesn't matter their level of alignment, it's not accurate. For my Bible says, nevertheless the foundation of the Lord standeth sure having this seal the lord knoweth them that are his and that every man that names the name of christ must depart from iniquity then he now gives us an analogy he says in a great house there are four kinds of vessels that there are vessels of gold of silver of wood and of clay he still calls all of them vessels he now goes further to say some vessels are unto honor and some vessels are unto dishonor condition if a man will purge himself that man will become a vessel unto honor meet for the master's use what does it take for God to use men what does it take for men to inexperience be a display of the power, the wisdom, the influence, the wealth of God, especially in this end time. I will tell you, are you ready for the first prize? This will be the first that we will take tonight, drawing from the story of Jacob. The first prize, non-negotiable price, is the price of brokenness. Brokenness. It's a very old teaching that our fathers and the patriarchs taught. Now it's gradually fading. Our advanced and civilized generation is fading that reality away as to the fact that if any man wants power with God, the non-negotiable price is... I'll tell you very quickly. Brokenness is a state of realization and a state of acknowledgement that outside of the help of God you are limited it is a state of realization and a state of acknowledgement that outside of the help of God vain is the help and the strength of man you want to do mighty things for God the first price is not getting the name of a ministry or the name of a business. No. The first price, non-negotiable, is the price of brokenness. That you get to a point in your life where by revelation and by an act of your will, you come to a safe conclusion that if God does not help me and hold my hand, I do not sustain the power within myself. The Bible says, says, lean not on your own understanding. It says in all your ways, how many? All your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 says, be not wise in your own eyes. It's a warning. It says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Why do we need to be broken? Why does God ensure that I must be broken to be usable I will tell you because of the tendency that is in the heart of man 
Scripture is already clear that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Scripture is already clear that unassisted, we do not even know what is locked up within our spirits. I want to show you a scripture to buttress on what I'm teaching you tonight. Is God helping someone? Second Kings chapter 8. I found this scripture many years ago. We'll begin our reading from verse 7. There were three people captured in this scripture. The Bible, before I begin to teach on this, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 9 and 10. Very popular scripture. Jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 9 and 10. It says the heart of man is desperately wicked have you read that scripture before the heart of any man any man who has not been vetted and walked upon by God no matter how sincere and how well meaning you look the verdict of God is that the heart of man is desperately wicked he said who can know it verse 10 now says I the Lord I search the heart, I try the reins, he says, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Do you know what this means? When you come to God and say, God, use me, empower me, bless me, anoint me. Don't you think God is carried away by your cry or your kneeling down or your rolling on the floor? There is a, the, the Lord is telling us that there is a weakness in the mortal man. So as a preacher, I may not even know the tendencies in my own heart. I may be sincere, but sincerity is not enough. There are tendencies in our hearts that are revealed as we grow. They are revealed as we are exposed. You've heard me say it every time that there are tendencies in your heart that can be quiet for 30 years because the opportunity for its manifestation has not come. So, for not come. So, when you come to God, hear me, He receives you as you are, but He does not send you as you are. The first price is brokenness. Are we together? Back to our text. Hmm. Second Kings chapter 8. We begin our reading from verse um, 7. Second Kings 8 verse 7. Three people were involved in this story. Number one was the king of Syria called Ben-Hadad. This was a story about Ben-Hadad. The second person was Hazael. Hazael attended. He was like an attendant to the king. Of Syria and then the third was a prophet called Elisha now follow this story very carefully a revelation of the heart of men this was King Ben Haddad who was a king over Syria are we together now and then Hazael was an attendant to him who served him faithfully but the prophet is about to reveal something about the hearts of men follow my reading carefully and Elisha came to Damascus and Ben-Hadad the king of Syria was sick are you still here and it was told him saying the man of God is come hither next verse and the king said to Hazael take a present in thy hand and go and meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord by him saying shall I recover from this disease so the king wants to know if his life will end or if he will recover. Are you ready now? So Hazael went to meet him and took a present with him of every good thing of Damascus, 40 camels burden. And he came and stood before him and said, Thy son Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, had sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? Now watch what the prophet says. And then watch his next action. That's my, that's where I'm drawing my text from. Elisha said unto him, Go and say unto him, 
thou mayest certainly recover how be it the lord has shown me that he shall surely die he said listen i respect him i can't give him this bad news go and tell him that he will recover but between me and you god has shown me that that king is going to die but that's not where i'm going the next verse is where i'm going everybody read the next verse please are you ready one two read and he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed elisha now and the man of god wept let me ask for you what you are reading so hazael comes to inquire whether king ben haddad will live or die and he says to respect him i can't face him to tell him he will die so tell him he will leave but hazael between me and you as a prophet that man will not recover he will die and the prophet put down his face and began to cry what made the prophet cry next verse verse 12 are you ready one to read again and hazael said why weepeth my lord and he answered because I know the evil that thou will do unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds will you set on fire. Their young men will you slay with the sword. Thou will dash their children and rip up their women who have children. Hold on. Who was he talking to? An innocent, sincere man, obedient man, sent by the king and he came. And the prophet said, forget what you are seeing now. I've seen the version of you that will be evil. You will tear women who have children in their stomach. You would have looked at Hazael and said, Hazael, you are a good man. For the king to send you and you can come and be obedient. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Next verse, 13. And Hazael said, but what? Is thy servant a dog? He's fighting the prophecy now that he should do this great thing. And Elisha said, The Lord has shown me that you will be king over Syria. Hazael, you look like a sincere man now, and you are even sympathetic. I just described something you will be doing a few years later, and you said, God forbid. God has shown me that when you become a king, something that is hiding in your heart now that you do not even know will be revealed is someone following my story go to second kings 13 from verse 22 to 24 for sake of time second kings 13 let's see the manifestation of that prophetic word remember hazael refused and said no 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 this cannot be the bible says but hazael king of syria oppressed israel in the days of jehoahaz the same hazael that years ago the prophet told him that you look like a sincere man now but the way you are going except god steps in in the future you will be a wicked man hazael said no now the bible is saying that hazael oppressed israel the same way the prophet said and the Lord was gracious unto them and had compassion on them and had respect unto them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and would not destroy them, neither cast he them from his presence as yet. The last verse. It says, so Hazael, king of Syria, died. How did God have mercy upon them? By killing Hazael. Can you imagine that? That he was so wicked God had to kill him so that his people will find rest. Look up, please. If I told you today, respectfully speaking, or if God told you today, man of God, you are a murderer, you will say, God forbid me. I have never held a knife. I am innocent. God, just give me a church with 10,000 people. I am a man of integrity. And God says, go and fast. There is, there is guile in your heart. You usually will not agree. Can I tell you this? I have learned something as a principle. Every time you want to know the true report of who you are and how your future will be if God does not help you, go to his presence and tell him, Lord, reveal unto me 
what are the tendencies in my heart there are many people when they were staying in rented apartment they would not miss church they would not miss anything prayer and fasting they are there and you would call them committed brothers even considering making them pastors until they got a job there are people who their lack of being employed can deceive them into thinking they are spiritual themselves it's just that they have a lot of time and nothing else to do so meanwhile while they are waiting for a blessing they seem to be committed but let a job come let marriage come let children come let lifting come can i tell you you know those who love god not just when they are idle when they have what can occupy them and they still keep his place they deserve your respect is someone learning gehazi never knew gehazi never knew that there was that lost in him to the point that he could inherit leprosy he didn't know that you would call gehazi a faithful servant you would call him a potential prophet until he saw gifts in the house of naaman after they gave gifts after they gave all those things and he said no 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 carry your things the man said no we can't leave this thing like that do you know why i'm teaching you what i'm teaching you my dear people many people have started well but failed god on the way because they jumped the class of the spirit the class of brokenness they didn't miss the class of power they didn't miss the class of revelation they didn't miss the class of leadership they didn't miss the class of influence but they missed the class of brokenness and they are carrying over in shame today because they did not allow him to break their hearts as at the time they were seeking God and rolling on the ground they had only a bike and they said Lord there is nothing I will not give you and God said let us see the first one million that entered their hands God said give it um, I mean give it give it away he demanded that they would give it and they cursed him I rebuked that voice it can't be God whereas in his destiny he was supposed to be a kingdom billionaire it was only a test to see what was in his heart the young boy David in that little obedient shepherd boy was an arrogant king was a murderer all in one person but you would never see it at that point There are people today who have failed God in ministry and in business. If you saw Judas when Jesus was selecting the disciples, do you know what it meant for Judas to qualify to be Jesus' treasurer? Jesus would not give a weak person. He was a competent man. There is no record that he was careless with keeping the finances. He was only a thief. But the thief did not show up immediately. The thief showed up three years later. So you have come for this conference and while you are sitting down and saying, Lord, give me the power to go to the nations. God is saying, listen, if I do not break you and walk on you, the day fame comes upon this, your life, you will become a casualty and a lesson to the body of Christ. You will become a discouragement to Christendom. Are we together now? apostle no man is perfect i agree but let me tell you this until god breaks you you come as you are but you are never used as you are you come as you are and then you go to the school of the spirit in the school of the spirit it is not anointing that is given to you you begin a journey a journey of pruning a journey of cutting away the flesh let me tell you this this is about the hardest journey in a christian's life you may not like what i'm telling you but if it is revival and power you want i'm sure some of you seen people under the anointing now all you think it takes to produce this result is that an anointed person lay hand on you and you drop offering on his leg you are joking you are joking again think again uh -uh. 
you can receive impartation you can't receive a track record 